every woman in this room needs this book, Breast the Owner's Manual. It was written by uh, my next guest. We're gonna get funky, because her name <laughs> is Dr. Funk. <laughs> Dr. Christy Funk. We're, we're gonna play a little game to see how many people um, believe this is true versus false. Okay, what are we gonna start okay, with? Okay, so the whole audience has paddles. Get them up, get them ready. True, false, true, false. The first question is, if you have larger breasts, you have a higher risk of breast cancer. True or false? <gasps> Look at these smarty pants. Really good. 90 job. job. 90 percent of you good are job correct. Good team. You all said false. Just about <laughs> all of you, and that is correct because size doesn't matter. Content matters. So the milk producing lobules of the breast and the ducts, they get cancer. What makes a large breast large most of the time is fat. Right. So that doesn't get breast cancer. In our models here, we've got an A cup and like an F cup and they have the same number of grapes in each cup. So that the grapes are the lobules. We have a little bit of jello, AKA fat over here and a lot over here, but the same amount of breast tissue, the same breast cancer risk. What is different, however, is genetically you can be born with more grapes. So if you have more grapes, you will be told you have dense breasts. And so in addition to your annual mammogram, you should also get a screening ultrasound. That's a big one. You need to double down. <laughs> if you're double deep. No. Right, you need to double down. <laughs> Consuming soy increases breast cancer. I've heard this one a lot. A lot. Ooh. Now, this one's more like a 50-50. I'm going 50-50. People 50 -50. are fence sitting true, false, on that. True, false, true, yeah. false. Consuming soy is good for you. That statement is false. So, that's really good, because I'm going to a restaurant that has delicious edamame tonight. Yes. <laughs> so am I. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, here's the deal. I apologize. For 16 years as a breast surgeon, yeah. I thought, okay, Soy has phytoestrogens, these isoflavones. If you look at the chemical structure, it looks almost exactly like the real deal estrogen. Huh. So I told all of my cancer patients, just spit that miso out of your mouth right now. Like, right, no right, more right. edamame for you. Right. Because I thought it would act like estrogen and feed and fuel breast cancer. Wow. 80% of all breast cancer is fueled by estrogen. So I was like, mm, say no to soy. Until... I wrote my book. Right. Then I finally looked at all of the research, and particularly since 2009, there have been a number of studies about soy in human beings as opposed to little rats and mice, because we're right, not right, the right. same. Not the same. Not only is soy safe, it literally drops breast cancer rates by 60% for soy consumers. And if you already have breast cancer, <laughs> If you already have breast cancer, it drops recurrence by 60% and death amazing. by 29%. So here's the deal with soy. I want it to always be non-GMO, plus or minus or organic, but always non-GMO. And when you pick the soy milk, mm -hmm. you want the first ingredient on the box to always be whole soybeans, not soy protein isolate. Gotcha. So we've got soy milk, tofu, tempeh, miso, edamame. They are all, all good. good for the breast. Woo! Wearing deodorant and antiperspirant does not cause breast cancer. True or false? Uh, ooh, false. Uh, mm, Sixty forty. This is true. Most people think it's true that it yeah. does not cause breast cancer, and it doesn't. You are correct. <laughs> Except I would say forty percent. Now, did this myth get started because? Because of what was in the news with the baby powder and all that? Uh, I think it got started because deodorant used to have parabens in it. Ah. And parabens were like a big no-no, although they were never tied to causing breast cancer. They did act as what we call endocrine disruptors in the body. Right, but right, right. These deodorants don't really have parabens. It's hard to find them now. They all are paraben-free. What they do have, though, is aluminum chlorohydrate. And so people would postulate, oh, maybe the aluminum, because as an antiperspirant, it's plugging your pores right. so you don't sweat. And so maybe that aluminum is directly toxic or it's causing toxins to build up and then get into your lymph right, nodes. Right, 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 right. But it turns out that it has absolutely no basis in physiology and there's zero scientific evidence. There's zero evidence. scientific evidence for so, it. So that's yeah. good because I'm a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a river runs through it. It's horrible. If I had to live without deodorant, I don't think anybody would live with me. I can tell you that. <laughs> anyway, I love her. Everyone here is going to get the most important book in the world to them. Yes, everybody's getting Dr. Funk's book, Breast the Owner's Manual.